Hello everyone, my name is Emily, and today we're gonna learn how to draw some flowers. I wanna start off by issuing a quick disclaimer. I am not a botanist, I am a painter. I am someone who studies flowers from the outside, not from the inside. So please forgive me if I skim over a few very important anatomical details of our flower friends. It is highly likely that I will do so. This video is strictly about how I visualize and how I paint flowers and trying to share that knowledge with you. It is really not about how how plants get it on with their male and female parts. Wow, way to be heteronormative flowers. It's 2019 in here. It is the current year and how dare you? Before we get into the video, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video was brought to you in part by Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning platform dedicated to helping you learn a new skill. They've got more than 25,000 classes in art, cooking, business, and so much more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can hop around the site until you find what classes are right for you. What's great is their annual subscription rate is less than $10 a month. That's way cheaper than signing up for a class at your local community college. I'll be honest, I have a great business relationship with the people at Skillshare because they're all about supporting small creators. That's the foundation their company is built on. Every creator on their site puts tons of effort into their lessons. Like Brent Evans, and his course, The Art and Science of Figure Drawing and Gesture, Lessons 1 through 12. This is another one of those really powerful courses that fundamentally changes the way you do something. It's just so full of information and gives you so many great ways to practice at home. I really appreciate all the work that went into making this course because it was very helpful for me. Make sure to click the link in the description for two months of Skillshare Premium for free just to try it. So why don't you learn something new today with Skillshare? So let's go ahead and real quick break down the anatomy of a flower. The absolute most basic thing that you as the person painting the flower needs to know. By the way, I keep switching between saying painting and drawing because I will be doing both in this video. Now we're all familiar with the petals of a flower, with the stem of the flower, and with the leaf of the flower. But something people forget to paint in a lot of the time, especially when painting the profile of a flower, is the receptacle. The receptacle is where the stem meets the sepal leaves. And the sepal leaves are another thing that people often forget to draw. The sepal, or as I like to call them, the peekaboo leaves, caress the flower from the bottom. This is because the top of the flower actually bloomed from within the receptacle and the sepal. This is a really important thing to visualize, especially when you want to draw different stages of a flower growing. Now here's where things can get different from flower to flower. If we look into the center of our flower, we can see a few things. We could see a bunch of little hairy things with little bulbs on the end, and those are called the stamen. We also see this large shaft-like appendage with kind of like a little kissy mouth at the end, and that whole appendage is called the pistil, and the kissy mouth at the top is called the stigma. Now within the pistil, there are some more reproductive organs? Would you call it that on a flower? Sure, there are some more reproductive organs within the pistil itself, but because we can't see them, we're not gonna talk about them, so throw that out. I repeat, not a botanist, just a lowly painter trying to make her way in this world by painting pretty things and sparkles. Now, not all flowers have both male and female reproductive organs, the stamen being male and the stigma slash pistil being female. The reason I'm going over the anatomy opposed to the structure first is because I want you guys to have a very basic understanding of what a flower at its core really is, what parts make it up. Sure, we could just focus on drawing the pretty fluffy part on top, but I feel it's a lot more helpful when you understand the anatomy of something because it gives you a clear picture of how something exists in nature, how it's affected by its environment, how it moves, how it grows. Knowing the anatomy of a flower gives you a much better jumping off point for drawing different angles of a flower, different stages of the flower. I find that studying anatomy in combination with studying from reference is the most effective way in learning to draw something from memory and then from there taking what you've learned and being able able to stylize it. So now that we have a basic understanding of the anatomy of a flower, let's go ahead and finally take a look at the fluffy part on top and figure out the structure of the petals. So before we look at the placement of the individual petals, I want to show you a very basic skeletal structure to help you understand what the flower is going to look like once we're finished. So taking a look at our flower in a three-quarter view, we are going to visualize a ping pong ball inside of a bowl 
inside of a larger bowl. What we're looking at is a flower that is almost in full bloom, but not quite there. So in order to get our flower into full bloom, we are going to dice these bowls into sections and allow them to fall outward. This is also including the ping pong ball. Now, depending on your species of flower, the ping pong ball may have been partially closed and you may have been able to see some of the reproductive organs before, but now in full bloom, the ping pong ball is diced and opened, exposing the reproductive organs of this flower. The reason I had you start with a flower that is not in full bloom and then have it open from there is because it makes it so much easier now to take that flower and close it back up, meaning that if you want to draw a flower in a more premature stage of growth, all you have to do is go from that starting skeletal structure and move those bowls closer to the ping pong ball. It's a really strange way of looking at things, but it helped me immensely when learning to draw flowers. Now let's go ahead and take a look at petals individually. Now a common mistake I see a ton of people making, and myself included a lot of the time, especially when I'm in a rush, is making the petals all all one flat color. Even though sometimes a flower may look one color, if you pluck one individual petal, you will find that it is not just one color all the way through. A lot of flowers even have two completely different colors on one single petal, giving them a very unique sunburst kind of look. So always keep that in the back of your mind that we will see a color change from the very tip to the very base of the petal. Another really good thing to remember is that petals come in all shapes and sizes. The color of the petal, the shape and size of the petal, how close together or far apart the petals grow from one another. This is what makes each individual flower unique. This is how we tell a rose from a ranunculus. There are completely different shapes, colors, variations of flowers, and it's your job to study and understand why they're different. Okay, it's not your job, but that's why you're here, right? All right, let's go ahead and put everything together. Now let's look back at our skeletal structure really quickly, the ping pong ball inside all of the bowls. We are now going to quote unquote, insert the petals into the structure, making sure to stagger the petals on every other layer. As we're doing this, we wanna keep in mind the actual physics of each individual petal. They're going to be a little bit more stiff at the base, and then they're going to start acting a little bit more almost like a fabric at the top, where there's a little bit less structure integrity. Keep in mind that every single petal is going to do its own thing. Not every single petal is going to look exactly the same. If you look at my rose, you'll notice that there are some quote unquote sharp edges or some angles almost to them. And that's because as the rose matures, the very end of the petals become so delicate that they begin to kind of curl over on themselves. Compare that to my slightly immature peony here where the petals are erect and almost folding inwards towards that peony ping pong ball center. And notice how that ping pong ball center is covering those stamens. So as this peony matures, those petals are going to go up, out, and back, eventually revealing the stamen that had been covered previously. The flowers that I'm painting in this video are not meant to be 100% photorealistic. We are using our artistic license here to just show you the very basic layout of what certain flowers look like. I talked a little bit about this before, but I really wanna impress upon you the importance of using multiple references and understanding what a flower looks like at different angles. Obviously, over time, I developed developed my favorite kinds of flowers to paint, favorite kinds of leaves to paint. So eventually I didn't need to use reference anymore just because I had studied these flowers to death. I'm also a big believer in the flower that you're creating doesn't necessarily have to even be a real flower. It can be inspired by a real flower. Like for example, that flower with the really large dramatic leaves closing in on itself, it's kind of like a mixture between an immature chrysanthemum and a Peony. It's a very dramatic flower that may not 100% represent real life, but it's very aesthetically pleasing. There's so many purposes of a flower in the flesh. You know, you can use flowers to brighten up a room. You can use flowers to give you something to do, something to tend to. You can use flowers to add fragrance to a room. You can physically use the flowers in medicine or in cosmetics, um, but there really is only one purpose for painting flowers, and that's to make them look pretty. And that's why I had the disclaimer at the beginning of the video because I know there are probably a handful of people who watch this video and are just chomping at the bit to correct me on X, Y, and Z. I don't know nothing about flowers. Let me just 
reiterate that. I don't know nothing heifers. So please... Don't take this video as me trying to be like, I am the all-knowing flower oracle. Come to me, for I am a fountain of botanical knowledge. That is... That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just some simpleton who was like, I like pretty thing, how I draw pretty thing easier. And I kind of worked out my own way of understanding how to draw flowers, and I'm just praying and hoping that my ping pong balls and my bowls make sense to somebody, somebody, anybody, anywhere out there, please. <laughs> Why am I saying please? Please, daddy. <laughs> I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to draw flowers and not make anyone mad. <laughs> Story of my life. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this style of video. Did you find it informative? Did you find it boring? Do you think it's too different from the stuff that I normally do? Anyway, guys, sorry about that tangent. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.